Hi everyone, my name is Michelle and I'm on my Loves You DB here on Flosstube, but also over on Instagram and Etsy as well. Welcome to the Sunday morning briefing. I know it's July the 17th tomorrow because it's my best mate's birthday. So happy birthday, Lindsay. Um, and what number Flosstube? I think it might be 81. I think last time I uh, did the numbers, I suddenly realised that was Flosstube number 80, which is crazy. It's so hot. <laughs> It's so hot here. So for those of you who don't know, the UK is just coming into a heat wave. They reckon that the temperatures could reach 41 degrees C. Now, some of you, maybe in the southern states of America, are thinking, 41? That's nothing, that's jumper weather. But for us in the UK, that is pretty warm. Our previous highest recorded temperature ever was 38.6, I think, which was only achieved after a good few days of sunshine and several people with their oven doors open. But it's supposed to get to 41 later on in the week. So it's hot. I'm just gonna have to permanently remove the kind of glistening. It's just sweat. <laughs> So why then, I hear you asking, are you wearing a dirty great big jumper? Well, <laughs> I said last week that I had um, a little surprise. I was hoping to have a little surprise for you. And this is my surprise. Well, one of them. I have started to make a few hoodies and jumpers. Why? Why might you ask that question? Well, I wanted one for myself. I really wanted a, a shirt. You don't see many kind of stitchy related clothes um, about the place. So I, I just wanted one for myself. Um, and then I sort of got put in a few designs together. And I thought, oh, other people might like these as well. So I've joined a website called T-Mill, um, which is based in the UK. And they are a print on demand company, um, organically based company using organic cottons, um, making beautiful sweatshirts, beautiful hoodies. And then you can just upload your own design. And then what they do is they print on demand. So I don't have to stock 25 different hoodies in different colors, different sizes. Um, for you guys, you just go online, order what you want. So what you'll find when you go onto my store, if you wanna go onto my store, is that um, basically the thing that's different is the text colour. Every kind of item has a different text colour. Um, and then when you click on that item, choose which text colour you want first, regardless of what's written on it. Um, click on that item, and then you'll see several other like hoodie colour options come up as well. So I've got a few different um, designs. I've got the kind of classy stitcher one, which is what I'm wearing, which is available in lots of different hoodies. Um, it's available in, I've used the whole range of their, their products. So I've used men's and women's products. Um, obviously it's a hoodie, a hoodie is a hoodie is a hoodie, but I wanted to be able to use the full range of sizes. Um, I did mine not by kind of UK sizes, like 12, eight, uh, 14, 18, whatever, when I ordered my samples, I actually measured a favourite hoodie of mine and then just ordered the corresponding measurement rather than looking at the size. So there's this one. And then I also ordered just a plain blue jumper, which has got the stitcher written on it or stitcher written on it in little cross stitch. <laughs> <laughs> so that one is available as well and then there's a couple of t-shirts I think there's a stitcher t-shirt and then there's also some fun t-shirts uh, where you get to choose whether you're going to be team stitch along or team start along so if you fancy a little bit of stitchy related clothing just go on and have a look and see what they've uh, see what I've put on there it's all good fun Billy Conley does a fantastic sketch actually and I'll if I find it I'll link it below about groups of people and you know it gets bad when they start designing their own uniforms you know the moment someone says oh red socks would look lovely with that you just need a purple plume there then you know things have gone a bit too far but hey a hoodie is a hoodie i love a love a cozy hoodie now i'm gonna see if i can make it through the rest of the video keeping this on if i suddenly look like i'm wearing something else then i've not <laughs> it's so hot right i'm gonna show you what i've been stitching this week i've got um, the usual stuff I've got stitching, I've got, I think I've got three freebies maybe? And a little bit of haul, not a lot, but a little bit. And some stuff I'm really excited about as well. As always, it wouldn't be 
a Mama Loves You GB Sunday, Sunday morning briefing if there was, wasn't stuff that I was excited about. So I've done a little bit more on my Santa. I was hoping that I would have finished him off, but I didn't quite get as much stitching on him as I as I wanted to. But never mind, as long as I kind of get him finished by the end of July, I'll be I'll be happy. So here's a just cross stitch Santa. Let me just see if I can find the page number or the the pages. So I have the Just Cross Stitch CD-ROM, which is um, the normal CD-ROM, not the Christmas one, not the Halloween one, and it goes from 2011 to 2015. So it's just all of the PDFs that were in those, all of the charts as PDFs that were in those magazines. Um, and this one is in the November, December 2011, the normal one. And that's what it looks like. You get all four of them. And I've obviously started with that one there. And I'm using the Call for DMC. It's just amazing to see it coming to life. It really is. And I can't wait till he's he's done. So I did some more on him. Um, I'll just tuck it over there for now. And then the next thing I did was a little bit out of the blue really. I say out of the blue, I had the fabric dyed, I'd bought the floss, but I hadn't really thought about starting it. Um, but I just suddenly did, I just suddenly started it. Um, and it's this one, I'm just trying to see, there we go. The Tiny Modernist Halloween Crystal Ball. So, there's that one there. Now I think I've seen part of this middle bit. I think it's a cat. I think it's a cat. You know, that, that cool kind of Halloween type cat. Um, so that's what it looks like. And I have finished that part all bar the bits that require some back stitch. So this is on a piece of 32 count linen that I hand dyed myself and I really love it I really love it and it's stitched up quite quickly and even more incredibly I got that circle right the first time which having said that I've just found one stitch that I've missed I'll have to put that in it's just over there you can see there's a slight bump that's what made me see made me see it looking at it in the camera um so there's that. The only thing I haven't done, as I said, is the back stitch. So the little flowers have got some stamens sticking out of them. There's a spider's web here, and I haven't put the spider in either because that would be counting. That would mean too much counting. It's too far away from here for me to be bothered to count, and it's too far away from here to be bothered to count. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Excuse me. You might just actually see where I got the kind of type for this one. <laughs> My favourite uh, Coke Zero there. Um, what, was I, what was I waffling on about before I rudely interrupted myself? With a cough. I'll edit that bit out. Um, try again. So yeah, I haven't done the spider because it's just too much like counting. So I'll wait and see if anything else comes close to it. If not, when I put the line in, that the spider, the silk that the spider's on, I'll just do in them. And then the other thing that I did was I had a new start because I'm I'm short of some new starts at the minute. Now this is actually a haul. It's haul in terms of the chart. It's haul in terms of the threads. I just fell in love with this one, and it's another another wishing thorn chart so i showed you a wishing thorn chart either last week or two weeks ago sarah Plummer, and i've actually bought another two from um from them this week because they've just got some amazing amazing charts at the moment so the one i have chosen that i love is mary bar now i just love that is so unusual in the middle there it's almost kind of like art deco now this was stitched in 
1828. So we're way away from that time period. But that house and just those lines, it's so unusual. And the way that everything kind of goes round the outside, could not help myself. So I bought all the floss for it. Did I bring the floss up? It's a high possibility that I didn't, no. And I have made a start on a piece of 36 count weeks dye work straw that I'd actually earmarked for something else, for one of my own designs, but it just looked perfect on here. Now, you're gonna look at it and you think, well, that's not gonna show up, it's not showing up very well on that fabric. But one of the things I really like about this is the, the way it looks on that kind of yellowy background and putting the, um, the colours up onto this piece of fabric, I think this is gonna give me the best kind of option. So, let's see whether it will show up. I've only got a really small start in the top corner because I did start on another piece of fabric which was much, much paler and I didn't like it so much. It looked, um, the colours looked just very kind of pastel-y and not, not what I wanted at all. So I think as we get in and more detail goes in, those colours will, will stand out a little bit better. But in person, they're absolutely fine. Right, what else have I got in my pile of printed charts? Let's go with the freebies. I have three freebies to show you. I'm going to start off with a new designer, a new designer. This is Chloe. Um, now, I've known Chloe kind of online for a little while, a long, long time ago. She bought a Blackbird Designs um, chart from me. And we kind of just, you know, message backward and forward and comments and things like that. Um, and Chloe is actually an auctioneer. Um, and my dad was an auctioneer, so we've talked in the past about gavels and about saving all the gavels. So every time we find one in the charity shop or an um, antique shop, we try and save the gavel. Um, and she, you know, unsurprisingly, through her job probably, or um, I know she likes to go round uh, antique shops herself, has come across this beautiful little pillow. So it is an antique pillow. Or what's left of an antique pillow you can see unfortunately they they do uh, have some losses these days don't they um i've got samplers with big big holes in them but it's uh it's beautiful still and i love these how pretty are those keep my eye out for some of those anyway this is the chart that she has done and she's giving it away for free so i'm going to put the link down below it's really really simple she has that's what she did on the back she has stitched this on the front and I'm pretty sure you can see it on her Instagram so her Instagram is girl with the gavel stitches and she gives you some information on the back about the actual um, piece and about where she got it from and about um, how she went about you know stitching it what she's used but how pretty is that? That would just make a perfect little pin cushion for any little um, stitchy box or display. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So there's that one. That's my legend for Mary Bath, let's not lose that. And then Paola from Puntini Puntini has done, let me just fold this in half. Now this is available on her website. You go to the freebie section on her website and it says, please enter your pin. How fab is that? And of course, she's got some of her own brilliant pins in her little pin cushion that she's, that she's made there. So it gives you some suggestions of Belle Soise or the corresponding DMC, but you could do, you could use whatever you wanted. Although I do really love the way that tomatoes come out and the shading on the tomato and the green on the um on the spool so go and grab that one 
and then the last one is from Mama Witch Cross Stitch and you will find this on her Facebook. Now I'll link it down below because I can never remember. I think her Facebook is Mama Witch X Stitch. Um, and if you were looking for her charts, if you'd seen them before previously on Etsy, she's now got a Gumroad um, instead of Etsy. So this one, let me just move. See, I've really, really finished off Susanna Eccles, haven't I? <laughs> I mean, I get asked a lot about this finish. In fact, I can. Now this is asking for trouble usually, lifting things over. This is a Mama Witch X stitch. This is called Pumpkin Gardener that I st stitched a little while ago on 30 Count Week Styleworks Dolphin. And it's usually in the background over here. Every month she puts a freebie on her Facebook group. And this is the one that she's put up this month, which I really, really love. I can't make up my mind if I would do the pumpkins around the outside or not. I like them, but I also just love the, the pumpkin guy in the middle. So when I've stitched it, I'll have to make a decision. It's stitched with um, DMC and you can get, always with Mama Witch X stitch, there's two different types of chart. You can either get a chart broken up, so somebody who would probably want to use it on paper or she always provides the chart on a full page so that you can use it on a, a tablet or a phone or something like that and just sort of zoom in to the bits that you want so that's the freebie as well I'm nearly done so I'm not going to go and change my jumper I'll just sweat <laughs> beautiful 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 right other purchases other purchases that I have made just dig those out this one another one from oh, don't need those another one from oh the wishing thorn <laughs> there's heat in my brain another one from the wishing thorn i love quaker alphabets love them love 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 them so i can't wait to stitch that one I tell you what, um, it's been a busy week. I didn't do the other life update, but we finished school. I know quite a lot of schools in England seem to have another week to go, but we finished on Friday. Thank goodness for that. We've got a seven week holiday, which is going to be amazing. On Tuesday, I tore two ligaments in my ankle. I was standing, waiting to go to school with my friend that I travel with. And I was standing, just standing in a small pair of wedge heels. And the next thing I know, I'd just gone over on my ankle, searing, searing pain, so, so painful, swelling straight away, hobbled out to the car. Luckily, Chris is a massage therapist, so he kind of knew what I'd done, knew not to do anything too much with it for the first 72 hours. And then, yeah, it's beautiful bruise colour now. But I was standing on two feet, not moving, and my Bambi ankles went. Now... I'm known in my friendship group for just being a little bit unbalanced. I have a beautiful road bike, which I've only ridden twice, once because I fell off it with both my feet on the ground. I was at a junction, <laughs> Chris was gone off from the junction, turned around and I was flat on the floor. I didn't have any clip-ins or anything like that, just normal flat pedals. And I had my feet on the floor. <laughs> so goodness only knows what will happen next. I'm not exactly a daredevil. I'm not in that bit anyway. There we go. A little aside and a tiny little bit more haul. I picked up some buttons today at the charity shop. I love going to charity shops for buttons. Um, you find some great things. So I found some buttons today. And I got this little bag of bells as well because Laura had had some finishing back. Laura from Brenda and the Serial Starter had had some finishing back from their fabulous finisher, Joy. And she'd done some beautiful little Christmas pillars and they just had like a little bell at the bottom. And I thought that was so lovely. So when I saw a whole little pack of bells, I grabbed them. And talking of Christmas, these have been out for ages. 
but I'd never really looked at them properly until I saw somebody on Instagram who had made three or four streets with the Little House Needleworks hometown holidays and she'd personalised them to members of her family and she hadn't used the colourful colours, she just used whatever colours she, she felt and they were phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal and so I just set about trying to, trying to find them. Now the only people that have got them in the UK that I've managed to find on, um, on the Tinterweb are Create Nostalgia. So I picked up how many did I get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of them. Ones that kind of I think would pertain to us and our family. Um, so I got the coffee shop. Chris drinks a lot of coffee. So I got that one. The needle workshop, obviously. No brainer. The quilt shop. I am an aspiring quilter, although I've only ever made one very plain quilt top. But there's room for improvement. Uh, the schoolhouse, Ness and I, very important for both of us. The toy store, Ness loves a good visit to a toy store. The pet shop, and I will be trying to make one of those little dogs into a little Dalmatian. And then I also picked up the tree farm as well because I thought it was a little something a little different. And there's two or three others that I want to get as well, um, like the church and the um, what was the other one I'd written down? The sweet shop, the church, and the station. I just like the train. Um, oh, and the people caroling. I like that one too. So yeah, I want to make like one or two long streets. Um, for Christmas so which Christmas I don't know but I just really like them so um, yeah and my mum actually has started doing a little bit of stitching she's just nearing the finish of her first project which is a little house needleworks one it's the one that says love laugh hope I think on the bottom of it and she's done that on 18 count Ada and it looks fab and she's nearly finished it. So she was doing, I was showing her today how to cut her DMC and put them on floss drops. Um, ready for her next project which is the cottage garden samplings, the Santa. I'll put a picture up in the top. She picked that one up and she really, really liked that one. So she said to me, she said, have you got any of those floss drops? I was like, one or two. <laughs> So yeah, that was lovely to be able to, to share that with her. So I'm going to go now and put a t-shirt on or something. I hope that if you're in the UK, you don't get too hot, that you get to be able to stay inside and do plenty of stitching. Um, and that I hope the rest of you are all okay out there and have a lovely week. Stay classy, stitchers.